teaching on how to believe God. Have you ever thought about it? How do you believe God? You know, do you just wake up some morning thinking, uh, you know, I just feel like believing God today? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not the way it works. There is a pattern established in the Word of God, and faith cometh by hearing the Word of God, and the Word must abide in you. I want us to go uh, to Matthew, the 21st chapter, and I want to read what Jesus said. And if you have your Bible, you ought to get it out and, and look at it. Jesus has just cursed the fig tree. Now, that meant he spoke words to it and, and said, No man will eat fruit from you hereafter forever. And the thing withered and died. The next day they came back by, the disciples asked him about it. We'll start verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you had faith and doubt not, you shall not only do that which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now that sounds almost unreasonable, or in fact it does to the religious head. But now notice, Jesus goes on and goes a step further. Verse 22, And all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Now what an awesome statement that is. All things that you can believe that is based on the authority of the Word of God, you can have it if you ask it in prayer. Now, actually, the, when you study the principle of this, it goes beyond prayer because when you get over into Mark 11, 23 and 24, it talks about uh, whosoever shall say to the mountain or the problem area, be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, what does it mean to believe God? The Scripture tells us, the Apostle Paul reveals to us in Romans, the 10th chapter, in verse 17, that faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. Faith in God comes by hearing the Word of God. So we know then that we have to hear the Word of God to believe God. See, somebody said, uh, uh, I'm just trusting God. Have you ever stop to just think about what, what you said, if you said that, or what someone else meant when they said that. If someone says, well, I'm just going to believe God, well, what, what are they going to believe about God? Or if they say we're trusting God, that means they're going to trust His Word, because that's the way that we believe God, is we release our faith in what He said in His Word, in the written Word of God. Now, when it says all things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive, that means that you're only limited to what you can believe based on the authority of the Word of God. If you can find authority in the Word for it, a promise for it, in the Word of God, or the fact that it's already accomplished fact, then if you can believe it, you can have it. But if you can't believe it, you can't have it, because... Faith cometh by hearing, and when you hear, you understand, and you conceive and perceive. Actually, it's through the eye of faith that there is an image created inside us. You have to live out the reality on the inside. You have to see the image. Let's say it this way. You have to have the image of the fulfillment of the promise on the inside before you live out the reality of it on the outside. Now, number one, I've, I've got about nine points I'm going to deal with here. Number one, do I want to know the truth? Now, that's the first thing you've got to consider if you're going to believe God <clears throat> and if you're going to believe His Word. Ask yourself, do I want to know the truth? Now, I've, I've met some folks in my time, and I've had them to write my ministry office and, and start saying a lot of things about criticizing something that I said on the broadcast. And they said, now, now, here's the way we believe it. And, uh, and they, they believed it a whole lot different from what I did. And we both had the same Bible. But they would actually take a scripture that was a faith scripture and preach unbelief out of it, or a healing scripture and preach sickness and disease out of it. And, and some of these people uh, just simply been taught wrong. Some of them are willing to change, but I've run on to a few that were not willing to change. They did not want to know the truth. <laughs> it was kind of like the fellow said, you know, they're thoroughly mixed up and firmly set. They're like concrete. They're thoroughly mixed up and firmly set and don't want to change. 
And uh, they really don't want you confusing them with the fact of the Word of God. They, they have been indoctrinated. Remember something T.L. Osborne said years ago. I've never forgotten it. He said, when people get indoctrinated, they quit thinking. And that's the truth. Some people get indoctrinated with what their doctrine teaches or what their church teaches as doctrine. Well, is it the truth? Do you want to know the truth? Now, the Bible tells us how to know the truth. Jesus uh, gives us that information in John the 8th chapter. The Jews that believed on them, him, he said to them, If you continue in my word, then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, notice, he said, if you continue in the Word. You have to continue to meditate the Word of God and deal with the Word of God to know the truth. And then, when you know the truth, you have to make a decision that you're going to believe the truth. So, first of all, find out what the truth is. Now, what you've been taught <laughs> in a religious setting and what some indoctrine, uh, indoctrination has taken place might not be the truth. You understand what I'm talking about. I mean, uh, I don't mean that people are just deliberately teaching something wrong, but if they misunderstood it, didn't have the whole thing together, then you may have been uh, in the position where you didn't know the truth. Now, I've heard people say, well, you know, the Bible says. <laughs> and when they say, the, you know, the Bible says, about 50% of the time, you're going to hear something the Bible didn't say at all. And you have to determine whether it's the truth or whether it's not the truth. So number one, if you, if you want to believe God, first of all, find out what the truth is. Because to believe God, you have to believe His Word. If you're going to trust God, you trust His Word. So you're going to have to go back to this book, the Bible, and find out what the Word of God said about what is it, whatever it is you're going to believe God about. Then number two, ask yourself this question. Is that truth valid for me today? Now, you see, you find some things under the old covenant that's not valid under the new covenant today. You know, the, for instance, the Apostle Paul said in Romans, the third chapter, he said, there's none righteous, no, not one. Well, now, he was quoting an Old Testament scripture. And, and we know that under the old covenant, uh, and the, the Paul said later in his writing in the book of Romans, if there could have been a law given that would have brought forth righteousness, then righteousness would have been by the law. But we know that uh, the old law passed away. There was something better. It's the new covenant. The new covenant's better than the old covenant. So then what Paul said in Romans, the third chapter, he was quoting an Old Testament scripture. And when you come down a few verses, I think it's verse 19, he said, And we know that whatsoever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth might be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. So he reveals the intent of what it said there. So when, when you consider what the Word said, or what somebody said the Word said, go to the Bible and find out if that's really what it said. And then discover, is it valid for me today? Is there time that it passed away? Now, you get all kinds of uh, opinions on things. You hear people say, well, you know, Jesus used to heal in his ministry, but you see, healing went away with the, when the last apostle died. Well, no, I can't find that in the Word of God anywhere. It's still happening today. The, the, you know, it's a finished work. At Calvary, it was a finished work. Your healing's paid for. Jesus doesn't have to suffer one more stripe for you to be healed. So uh, the Scripture tells us in Hebrews that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if He ever healed, He is still healing today through the Word of God and through your faith in His Word, in faith in what He said in His Word. So it's important to know uh, what the truth is. And then the other part is to find out, is it valid for today? Now I want us to go to uh, Psalms uh, the 89th chapter, verse 34, says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that have gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, his throne as the sun before me. 
It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in the heavens. When God makes a decision to do something, he does it that way. And when his word is out, my covenant I will not break, nor alter the things that have gone out of my lips. So when you find in this covenant, in the new covenant, the things that the scripture says, then you can rest assured you can bank on that. It's going to happen that way if you believe it, if you act on the authority of the Word of God. It has to be based on the authority of the Word of God. Remember, Jesus said, all things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Now, we go over here and find that Abraham, and in Romans, the fourth chapter, you find that Abraham, the Scripture says Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Well, now, you know that Abraham didn't just wake up some morning just feeling like believing God and just decide, I'm going to believe God, and the promised child was born. It was a process. God spoke to him. He had the promise for 11 years, no manifestation of the promise. And when God appeared to him, he said, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? God had given him a promise that he would be, um, a multitude would come from him, that he would bless all the nations of the world. And he was 75 years old at that time. And uh, his wife was barren, and, didn't, and he did not have a child. But he had the promise of God. God appeared to him. He said, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? He still saw himself childless. Now, here's a point I want you to get a hold of. When you have a promise in the Word of God, you meditate that promise. If it's something you're believing God for, find out what God said about it. And don't just take somebody else's word for it, because some folks will talk you out of believing God or believing His Word. Find out what the Word says, because it's important. You can't possibly believe or act in faith or pray in faith if you don't know the will of God concerning what you're praying about. It's important to know the truth. And if you know the truth, then decide if it's valid for today. And of course, you get into this New Testament, you find out what is valid under the New Covenant. Some things passed away under the Old Covenant, that's right. But under this New Covenant, we're living under better promises, established on better promises, and Jesus is the guarantee that it'll work. So Abraham, or Abram, his name was before, Abram was 99 years old and still didn't have the promised child. God appeared to him. Now, he had had the promise for 24 years from the time he was 75. No manifestation of the promise. God appeared to him when he was 99 years old and said, I have made you the father of many nations. Notice, past tense. He has God's word for it. Now, one, th one thing I want to point out about it, Abram had God's word for it from the time he was 75 years old. But he was not able to conceive it in his spirit and see it because he said to God when he appeared to him in the 15th chapter, he said, what will you give me seeing I go childless? He couldn't see himself with the promise manifest in his life. So if you can't see it, you can't have it. Now, we know the Scripture says the entrance of the Word bringeth light. Why is it we can't see some things in the Scripture? Because we don't have enough light. <laughs> I hear people saying, well, now, you know, Brother Caps, I just can't see this healing business. Well, you won't be bothered with it more than likely because you have to see it and understand it. You have to conceive it and know that it's true from the Scriptures to enter into it. It comes by faith. Faith is how we access the promises of God. So here's Abram, 99 years old. God changes his name to Abraham. Now he must tell everyone that my name is Abraham. And that went, meant father of a multitude or father of nations. So all the people worked for him and said, Oh, Abraham, where you want to put the well? Abraham, where you want to put the sheep? Where you want to dig the well? How many times do you suppose that he heard his name called? And he's hearing father of nations, father of nations, father of nations. The point I want to drive home to you is the fact that by the confession of his mouth is what caused Abraham to believe God. What you speak, you tend to believe. 
That's the reason you shouldn't speak things that you don't believe or things that are contrary to the Word of God. Find out what the Word of God says about it. Just say what God said about it until faith comes because that's what faith is. Faith is believing that what God said is truth and it releases the divine energy of God that's resonant in the Word in you. So you believe God by determining what is the truth, making a decision that is that valid for today, is that truth valid for today, then count the cost of believing God. Now, Jesus himself said no man would start to build a tower unless he sat down and count the cost. Well, you count the cost of believing God, then count the cost of believing the devil. You'll find out it's much easier to believe God than it is the devil because you don't have any Bible for believing the devil. You have all this Word of God for believing God's Word because He won't alter the thing that has come out of His mouth. It's valid in this new covenant, and it's valid for every believer. It belongs to you. Second Peter chapter 1 uh, Peter says, God has already given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. And here's the way he did it, through the exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. So you make a decision to believe God based on the authority of the word. Count the cost of believing God and believing the devil. Now over in Psalms 105, there's an interesting scripture here. Verse 19 Speaking of uh, Joseph, it says, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Now, you remember the story of Joseph. He had the dream, and he saw his brothers bowing down to him, and he saw all of these things that God revealed in that vision. It was a word of the Lord for Joseph, and he believed it. And he thought everybody would be as excited <laughs> about his revelation as he was. And boy, was he surprised. I mean, he told it to his brothers, and they got all upset about it and bent out of shape. And finally, uh, threw him in a well and, uh, you know, killed a, a goat and put blood on it and told his dad he died. And then they sold him into Egypt. And uh, it says, the word of the Lord tried him. I mean... He believed the word of the Lord that came in that vision. But that word tried him. That means that, that he had to hold on to that word and not let go of that promise of God that was given to him. Now, you see, in, in Hebrews, uh, the 10th chapter, we find a scripture that says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. Now, the word profession means confession. In other words, hold fast to your confession of faith. If you're confessing the Word of God, you find the Word of God, hold fast to it. Now, why do we want to hold fast to it? Because you don't want to lose it. The indication is that if you don't hold fast to it, you might lose it. Somebody may talk you out of it. And by telling you, well, you know, brother so-and-so believed that way. Uh, he, he trusted God and he died with the end growing toenail or something as foolish, you know. Well, I'm sorry about brother so-and-so. But uh, you see, we're, we're determining what the Word said, going to believe the Word rather than somebody else's experience. We don't know what brother so-and-so believed. We don't know whether he acted on the Word of God or not. So if you're going to believe God, you make a decision to hold fast to the confession of faith. When you find the Word of God, now here's, here's Joseph. He, he's put in jail there in Egypt for something that he didn't do. And it says, the word of the Lord tried him. Boy, I'll tell you, I, when you get a hold of this word and go to standing on it, there'll be some, some trials that, uh, uh, of your faith. They're not sin of God. God knows this stuff works. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. So he's not the one trying you. Who was trying him? It was the enemy and the circumstances that he was put in that was trying him. The word of the Lord tried him. In other words, the word was there, and, and that word still said the same thing. And was he going to still believe the word when he's in the well and looked like none of it's going to come to pass? Is he going to still believe God when he's thrown in jail for something he didn't do? Now, you know, 
we, we know what Jesus said, but sometimes we get all upset because somebody said something wrong about us or somebody uh, misunderstood something that happened and, and falsely accused us of things. And people get all depressed. But you know what Jesus said? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad when they accuse you of something you didn't do. So just get all excited and get happy about it. Now, I know it's easier to say than it is to do, but that's what the Word says to do. So Joseph just stayed steadfast on what that, he just kept that word before him. And you know the story. They finally brought him out of prison and made him the head over everything in Egypt. And, and it was God's way of, of bringing his family to Egypt where there was plenty. And you see, God had a million ways to get him there and get him to be ruler over Egypt without having him thrown in the well by the renegade's uh, brothers, you know. Uh, that wasn't God's purpose, and that wasn't God's plan, but you see, God got in on the scene and, and caused this thing to work out for good. And you see this happen many times in the Scripture. Now, number four, be willing to do what you must do to set it in motion or to act on the Word of God. Now, in Luke 6.38, I call it Jesus 6.38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Now, we know that there's more to it than that. That's, that's just part of it. It says, Judge not, lest you be judged. And condemn not, and you will not be condemned. So you see, you have to make a decision that you're going to do whatever it takes to get this promise to work in your life. Be obedient to the Word of God. Give, and it shall be given. Now, you see, most of the time we take that as given to the church or given to the ministry or whatever, but now that, that would include other things. It, it would include giving to the poor. It would include giving to your neighbor. It would include uh, giving to somebody that had a need. So, you see, we, we must validate these things according to the Word of God. And uh, when you give, now this is a law, a universal law of the Word of God, is give and you'll receive. If you give love, you receive love. You, you give out strife, you're going to get in strife and you're going to have strife. Uh, you walk in love and, and the blessings of God will be upon you. You have to avoid strife at all costs and be a doer of the Word of God. You, you really have to make a decision to believe God. Number, number five, make a decision to believe God based on Bible facts, not based on hearsay. You know, I've discovered down through the years that there are people that, that about all they know about the Bible is what they've heard that somebody said they thought they heard somebody said the Bible said. <laughs> they really don't know for themselves. Uh, I had a man say to me one time, he said, well you, well, you don't pray about financial things, do you? I said, sure I do. If you have a need, you, uh, the Scripture says, uh, he that asketh receiveth. Well, he said, I thought the Bible said we ought not pray about uh, material things. Well, I asked him, I said, whose Bible have you been reading? Whatsoever things you desire, the Scripture says, when you pray, believe, you receive them, and you shall have them. Well, the truth of the matter was that he hadn't been, probably hadn't been reading anybody's Bible. All he knew about the Bible was what he heard that somebody said. They thought they heard the Bible said. But you see, you make a decision to do what the Word says to do. Make a decision to believe God based on Bible facts, not based on what somebody said they thought the Bible said. Now, you, some of you have been indoctrinated, and you need to go back and see if what, what you've heard the Bible said is what it really said. I tell you, it'll be a blessing to you when you do that. Uh, believe in God. How do you believe God? You make a decision to believe God based on Bible facts. And we're going to talk about that some more. But uh, before we leave the broadcast, I, I want to uh, talk about the offer this week. It's offer number 2011. It's called, um, well, actually, there's the Tongue Creative Force, 
three articles, the Tongue Creative Force on tape. It's called a talking book. Uh, then the book itself. The book is, uh, this book has sold about uh, 600,000 copies. The Tongue, a Creative Force. This is the first book that I offered in 1976. This book will be a blessing to you. And also, we're going to include this, God's Creative Power Will Work For You. This is a confession book taken out of this book. All three of these, three audio cassettes. This is the book on tape, narrated by myself. And uh, I know some of you don't have time to sit down and read a book, and, uh, but you're traveling in an automobile day after day, mile after mile. I tell you what, it makes it go faster. <laughs> it seems like time goes faster when you have something uh, to listen to. So these three audio cassettes, it's the tongue, a creative force, and... It's audio, audio tapes, three tapes, plus the book, plus the mini book. This is a confession book. It's a workbook. You confess these scriptures daily. I'm the body of Christ. The enemy had no power over me to overcome evil with good. I am of God and have overcome the wicked one. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That's offer number 2011-2011. The book, the tongue, three audio cassettes, plus the mini book for $23 plus uh, postage and handling. That's offer number 2011. We have a toll-free order line. That's 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. Three audio cassettes, the, book, the two books, for $23, plus postage and handling. She moved like fire in the night With every glance I lost control She had a grip upon my soul Behind the mask, behind the smile She was playing me all the while oh. Oh, oh, oh. She said she loved me but it's all lies I see the truth now in her eyes Oh, It's a fool's game, thought she was mine But she was dancing on the line She played me all like a song I was blinded but it won't be long Cause girl you know that Will you can't fake a love you don't feel Ah, a love you don't feel Whoa And I was the only one But truth was clear when love was gone I caught her in another's arms A broken heart wrapped in her charms A broken heart wrapped in her charms A kiss was poison, sweet but cold Until the dawn 